The Berlin crisis has entered a new and more urgent phase. Ten days ago, the communists rang down the Iron Curtain right across the city, a hundred miles inside East Germany. Until then, Berliners could move fairly freely between the communist-controlled eastern sector and the allied western sector. Here in Berlin, the Iron Curtain had remained raised a few inches. But in recent weeks, a torrent of refugees from East Germany has passed through this gap after demands by Mr. Khrushchev for a final solution of the German problem. Ten days ago, West Berliners woke up to find their part of the city surrounded by East German guards. The eastern sector had been sealed off with concrete roadblocks and barbed wire. Tanks had been moved up to control points. West Berliners turned out to hoot and jeer at East German police. The atmosphere was tense. Police kept crowds well back from the boundary for fear of incidents. For the same reason, British troops wired off the Russian war memorial, which stands in West Berlin. West Berliners wanted action to show that their allies would back them up. And their mayor, Willy Brandt, sent a strong letter to President Kennedy denouncing the Eastern move as illegal. Berlin expects more than words, he declared. Last weekend, a crowd of Berliners cheered Vice President Lyndon Johnston. He told them America stood by them. Meanwhile, the East Berlin police authorities had almost completed their 24 miles of barbed wire and concrete wall designed to insulate East Berliners from the attractions and propaganda of the West. Until this sealing off process, the East Germans didn't guard their border so very strictly. Berliners could travel freely across the city by underground. Now this link has been cut. Stations near the sector boundary are locked up. The overhead railway has also been chopped in two. This train has gone as far as it can go in West Berlin. Down the line lies the eastern sector, but the way is firmly barred. As from this morning, only Germans with special passes to work in East Berlin can go in. They have to walk the last bit. The train goes back across West Berlin. Until 10 days ago, this was one of the routes used by refugees escaping from the east, but all that has been stopped. The eastbound passengers follow the line of the overhead track to the border post. The eastern sector, lying on the far side of the river Spray, begins actually on the Oberbaum Bridge, now closed to all but pedestrians. West German police let me through their post without even bothering to look at my passport. Only 10 days ago, this bridge between the two checkpoints was crowded with traffic. Now I had it virtually to myself, without even the sound of trains rumbling overhead. This line hasn't been used since the 13th of August. I found a gap in the tracks, marking the exact spot where the east sector begins. My back is in the west, my hands in the east. At the sight of our camera, East German police began to gather. The West Germans called us back behind the frontier sign. This bridge, now heavily guarded, was a favorite crossing point for refugees. Under cover of darkness, some of them plunged into the river and swam across. Back in the West, Small shops on the border are closing down. Their flow of customers, East Berliners after Western luxuries, has stopped. This shop has now closed. It straddles the legal border. One paving stone is in the east, one in the west. Everywhere along the border, suburban roads are cut in half. Next door neighbors are separated by barbed wire. Yesterday, in a road like this, a woman trying to escape jumped from the third floor window of a house in East Berlin to the pavement in West Berlin. She died on her way to hospital. This East Berlin carpenter says he's on his way to a job in this East Berlin flat. But the new barrier is 20 yards inside the eastern sector 
and the police turn him back. Eastern houses outside the barrier are being gradually cleared to create a no-man's land. This house is in the west, but the street in which it stands is in the east. These houses are in the east. Here, it's the street that's in the west. You can see from these pictures how absurd the artificial barrier is, but it looks as if the communists mean it to stay. I went into East Berlin with a British family visiting the city, the Normans from Wellin Garden. Mrs. Lisa Norman is a German by birth and her mother still lives in East Berlin. As from today, the Friedrichstrasse is the only place where foreigners may cross the border. Eastern guards searched our car, but they didn't spot our camera in the boot. Western police kept a protective eye on us as we drove through the barrier. Here's the street where Mrs. Norman's mother has a small flat. Luxuries from the West are always welcome in this part of the city. Some of these things are hard to get and very expensive. Mrs. Norman told me about life in East Berlin, how standards of living compare with those on the west side of the border. Yes, well, with food, they seem to eat well. Because, uh, my impression is they somehow think they eat better today, they might not get it tomorrow. What do you mean they eat well as well, well as what they, they can? can get? They eat what they can get. What does this... They maybe don't get it tomorrow, so they eat it today. But food is still rationed. We've seen potatoes are rationed yes. and butter. Yes, butter. Mainly... And there are queues. Yes, queues. Mainly for green grocery. Butter you have to be res registered for. But they get half a pound a week per head. What about uh, household goods? Well, there is for washing machines and televisions, fridges and cars, the bigger items, you have to wait roughly about two years, you have to register. Television, sometimes you get them quicker, maybe five, six months, maybe a year, maybe two years. But uh, several things, like for instance, my mother can't get any ceiling white to do her new flat up. And no wallpaper paste to stick the wallpaper on. The wallpaper she can get, but not the paste. We drove down the Stalin Alley, the showplace of East Berlin. Its Russian-style architecture is a striking contrast with the Western sector, only a few hundred yards away. There aren't many private cars about. But on the other side of the road, you can see East German armoured cars moving up to the border barricades. What is the long-term communist aim behind the building of the barricades? The party line was given to me by John Peet, a British journalist who defected to the East in 1950 and now works for the East German leader, Herr Ulbricht. Uh, the aim of all the suggestions made from the eastern side on the West Berlin problem has been to bracket West Berlin out of the general discussion. And uh, the free city was proposed as a compromise measure. Now, the latest steps have not produced a free city of West Berlin, a demilitarized neutral city of West Berlin, but they have gone quite a long way to taking West Berlin out of the general German question. And I can see, I'm talking here personally and not officially, oh, yeah. I can see the possibility that uh, the steps taken over the uh, weekend of August the 13th will make it much easier to reach some sort of an agreement, some sort of a compromise agreement on West Berlin. I wouldn't like to say on exactly what terms. Some sort of a compromise agreement laying down very firmly the guarantees for the right of access to West Berlin, the guarantees that the West Berliners will be able to pursue their way of life as they see fit. But presumably uh, that's just the chocolate round the pill, and the pill is that uh, ipso facto recognition by the West of the East German regime. Well, I think that that is something that has to come sooner or later. Uh, East Germany is, after all, the German Democratic Republic is, after all, the fifth industrial power of Europe. And it's ridiculous for people to go around and saying this country does not exist. It obviously exists. It's been going concern for 12 years, and sooner or later, even Washington will have to recognize that. 
Back in the Western sector, I called at the offices of the satirical magazine Tarantula to get an anti-communist view. Herwolf, the assistant editor, had a bottle on his desk. Curled up inside it, a figure representing Ulbricht. That's how they'd like to see him, bottled up. Herwolf fears the West may let them down. He wants firmer action. We uh, hope that uh, some kind of uh, restriction, for instance, of uh, interzonal commerce uh, may show to the East German leaders that uh, the free world, the free West, uh, does not admit uh, such a step as uh, and such a won't allow them to push us around. Push, push the the, uh, this, the situation in a dangerous crisis, which is near of war. But West Berlin opinion is divided, as the newspapers show. Many feel let down by the West, but there are plenty who realize that any panic action might plunge the world into another war. One of these is Professor Hirschfeld an intellectual and a former West Berlin senator. He takes a moderate line. A large number of West Berliners I've met have criticized the West, notably Britain, and indeed, of course, America and France, for doing absolutely nothing about this crisis, taking no action. Do you share this criticism? I wouldn't uh, dare to criticize uh, the three protection powers because the, the risk is too great. For all of them. The Every, risk of what? The risk of the government in question. I mean, your government has to uh, consider every step in view of the possibility of war. And I, I know that, in, that uh, people don't want war. So you don't feel. Neither we nor, the, nor Great Britain. I am convinced that Russian, that Russia, that Khrushchev doesn't want war either. But you see, my conviction doesn't count. I'm not a statesman. So you don't feel let down? No, not at all. Not let down, no. The arrival of a token force of American troops last weekend gave a boost to West Berliners' morale. So did the visit of Vice President Lyndon Johnson. But these Western moves provided little practical help. For Mr. Khrushchev has said he intends to sign a separate peace treaty with the East German government before the end of the year. If he does, Western movements in and out of Berlin will be controlled directly by the East Germans instead of the Russians. And there are many in the West who don't trust the East Germans to let them through. These are the last of four million refugees who fled to the West from East Germany in the past 15 years. Now the concrete wall has cut the escape route. But the solution to the crisis does not lie here in Berlin. For Mr. Khrushchev, the city is only a pawn in his campaign to force the Western powers to recognize the communist state of East Germany. The solution lies outside Berlin, probably outside Germany itself. It is in the hands of the leaders of East and West in the negotiations which lie ahead. <laughs>